bringing you key insights, tips, and advice from the brightest minds in the Canadian franchise industry. This is the Franchise Canada Chats Podcast. I'm Kirk from Reshift Media, your host for season 6.5 of the Franchise Canada Chat Podcast, where we take you into the world of franchising. Our interviews are with franchisees, franchisors, and industry leaders who give on the pulse expert advice and share their franchising insights and experiences. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Kirk Allen from Reshift Media and a very, very special guest, Walter Bond. Uh, we've got a number of questions from Walter that we'll ask him uh, for this little podcast. Uh, just quickly, a little, little bit about Reshift Media. We're a digital marketing firm. We work with tons of franchise systems around the world, here in Canada, the US. We build websites, we do social media, and we do search for all of these clients. Anyhow, enough about Reshift Media. Let's hear from our very special guest, uh, Walter. So. Um, we've got a few questions that we'll ask, and then we have a bonus question at the end. Um, so if we get to that, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, but the shark mindset, um, very interesting the way you, 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 you've structured the, the mindset and added shark to it. Um, what can franchising learn from your experience in high-performance sports? A lot. You know, there's a lot of parallels between business and sports. I didn't know it. You know, um, I played professional sports until I was 30, 31, and then we got into business. And I had never had a job. All I knew was sports my whole life, right? And so as I began to grow our business and meet different clients, I began to see the parallels. Teamwork, very important. Um, it's competitive, just like sports. You need to recruit, develop, or retain top talent. So it's almost the exact parallel, and in many cases, it's not any different for me. And the way I understand life first was through sports. And so when I get into business, I convert everything through my sports mind, and I've learned how to communicate it in a corporate environment. But for business leaders, especially franchises, the mindset is everything. You know, if you really think about culture, the root word of culture is cult which means we just think alike. You know, cult has a negative connotation to it, but the part I want to focus on is that when you're in a culture, the root word is cult, which means we all believe and think the same things. And so when I think about a strong brand, it's very important for your entire team to believe in the brand, um, become advocates of the brand, and have some team pride around the brand. Because if you care, about your brand, it's really easy to communicate that to the market, and the market will communicate back to you that same passion. So any great brand, I don't care where you're based, U.S., Canada, doesn't matter. You need to have a culture where everyone has the same mindset. So Shark Mindset is really a great opportunity to kind of get your team unified, get your team on the same page, especially from a leadership standpoint, because leaders drive culture. And if you're going to have the right mindset throughout your organization, it begins with the leader that hopefully we'll be able to connect with this week. So that goes right down to the franchisee, right? So you've got the, at the franchisor level, down to the franchisee and get them all rolling in the same direction and that culture. I, I think it's bigger than that. You know, if you really think about it, when you experience a service from a franchise, the experience for the end user, the customer, has very little to do in some cases with the franchisee or the franchise corporate team, but it might have everything to do with the manager, especially food, right? Mm. You go to a restaurant that's franchised, it's all about the manager on duty, right? And so the brands that we've worked with, we teach and train all the way down to the manager level. So if you go to a burger joint, for example, that's franchised, or a pizza restaurant, you know what? Those hot fries, that hot food, that clean restroom, that service has very little to do with the franchisee because they might have 30 locations. It has everything to do with the manager. So when I think about mindset, it needs to start with the corporate leader, the founder, the owner, the leadership team. It needs to be able to matriculate down to the franchisees. But until you get down to the managers, you really haven't allowed your culture to penetrate the entire brand. And the analogy is, if you season some meat, you gotta let it sit for a while so the seasoning can begin to influence the meat versus just laying some seasoning on top and then going right to the grill. Hmm. You know, a lot of people like to marinate their meat. When you marinate it, it gets to seep in through all the pores in the entire culture. And that's the analogy I think that a lot of franchise systems don't get. They don't understand that our entire brand needs to marinate in our culture. And if we can marinate the entire brand, 
with the same mindset, that's how you become unstoppable. Interesting. And I, and I like your point of it's that frontline team. So franchisee may be in the back office operating 30 locations, maybe multi-location, but it's that frontline staff, right? So that makes total sense. That's right. And you have to invest in them. Yeah. You know, uh, we just did a series of events for a brand, uh, Jersey Mike Subs, which is based in the U.S. And for about three months, you know, the founder and I went around the country doing programs for the franchisees and the managers and the supervisors. So we were able to penetrate the culture with the message, the core values, the brand, and able to get that mindset all the way down past the manager to the supervisor. Right, right, right. right <laughs> and right. the brand really had great momentum and synergy because the entire organization from the leader, founder, Peter Cancro, all the way down to the supervisor. I'm with you. With, with you. With me, with the same mindset. So we taught the shark mindset. They bought everybody in my book, and now some of the franchisees, unless you read my book, Swim, which teaches the shark mindset, you can't work for them. You know, so we were able to really unify the brand and get everyone on the same page with the same mindset. And that's how you build strong culture. Right. You know, because the truth is, Kurt, you know, we all have our own core values. And unless you really teach your corporate core values, I have no choice but to bring my own to work every day. Right. So you better teach me your core values because if you don't, I'm going to interject and use my own. So Jersey Mike's great example. Um, we've got a room or an audience full of franchisors out there. What other brands do you work with? Uh, franchise we've, brands. We've worked with a lot of brands through the years. Um, Burgerfy. Hmm. We've worked with Little Caesars. Um, I did a program for Domino's Pizza in Panama. I mean, we've done, my wife and I used to be franchisees of a brand, um, a brand called Jimbery Playing Music. I mean, so we've done probably 80 franchise events through the years. I've been used by IFA multiple times right. to do events for the IFA. And so coming here to Canada is awesome. I used to live in Canada. I lived in Saskatoon and it's very, very similar. You know, I love Canada because you're not in the U.S., but it's very similar. I feel very comfortable, but I respect it's a different country. Mm -hmm. You know, and with that being said, you know, I'm excited to be able to impact uh, my brothers in Canada nice. right? with, with, uh, with a message that is going to work anywhere. You know, when I think about fundamentals I learned in basketball, fundamentals work, you know, and I, and I think for your franchisors, it's their job to kind of impact the brand, and hopefully I can impact them, which will directly impact their brands. That's awesome. I love the fact you go mark to market with the CEO and deliver that message. So why franchising? You've, you've owned a franchise, you and your wife. Why should people consider purchasing a franchise? You know, I, I think it's a great business model, and you know, especially for me, you know, being a former athlete, you know, you can get tangled into a lot of different deals. But franchising is safer to me. You hmm. know, there's a there's a system, and they hand you the playbook, and all you have to do is execute the playbook, right? And so that's, that's why an analogy I, to sports, <laughs> you know, and, and it's your job to just to execute the play. Yeah. You don't have to overthink it. You don't have to tweak it. You don't have to change it. Just here's the playbook. Run the play. So whether it's a piece of joint, you know, uh, restoration company, coffee shop, you know, carpet cleaner. It doesn't matter what the yeah. brand is. They're going to hand you a playbook, and your job is going to execute the play. Now, I will say the franchisor needs to make sure they keep improving the system. And you're not really selling a franchise. What you should be selling is a profitable business. Hmm. And there's a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times I think the franchisors have a great idea. Sometimes they half-bake it, and then they sell it. Right. And then the franchisees start driving it and working on it. And they, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? But we're so busy selling units, we haven't improved the system. So I put pressure on both sides. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I really believe that the franchisees uh, need to be very responsible. I think they need to execute and don't rethink or overthink it. But I think the franchisors have a responsibility to keep improving the brand. And listening to the franchisees. Listen to the fran feedback. Absolutely. And, and create a true partnership. Yeah, yeah. And say, man, we're in this together. That's great. And your voice matters. You know, what, what happens to you happens to me. And to me, there's no better analogy of franchising than a family. You know, the franchisors are mom and dad, and the franchisees are the kids. And some kids are, are easy to work with, yeah. some kids are difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah. two kids, and each one of them are very different, right? right? right. But with that being said, 
you know, franchisors are the mom and dads, and they need to be able to develop their franchisees and help them be successful. And I think that instead of looking at it like I need to sell more units so we can be okay, it should be how can I serve my franchisees so that they can be okay? Because if the franchisees win, I'm going to win naturally yeah. instead of saying, let me just get more brands and more locations. And if you fail, we'll just resell your territory. And one of the brands that we are a part of, you know, that was the case. And the reason I'm passionate, Kirk, the brand that my wife and I bought in, I, I could tell the franchise system didn't care about me. And I knew it. Mm. And being a former athlete, I'm sensitive to that. Ownership. Yes. The ownership doesn't care about me as a player or a franchisee. Oh, I can smell it. I can sniff it a mile away. Yeah. And I need to know my owner cares about me. I need to know my coach cares about me. I need to know my fans care about me. And if I know that, I'm going to give you everything I got. I think brands need to think the same way. That the franchisee, every time they wake up, every morning, they ask that question subconsciously. Does my system care about my success? Does my franchisor care about me? And if you can answer that question with an emphatic yes, you're going to have a great brand. If the franchisees aren't sure, then all of a sudden you have a brand that can be compromised. You have a brand that can lose momentum. Your number one fans that should sell your system are your franchisees. So if you have an annual conference, you should love to invite prospects. Why? Because your franchisees are going to sell them. They say, man, this is a great brand, yeah. great company. I love our owner. We're on the rise. We're on the move. Versus, oh, God, stay away. This brand is bad news. Right. Franchisees are going to pretty much tell the truth. Right. Right. And so you got to make sure that you create fans, not with your end users, the customers. The first person you serve as a franchisor are your franchisees. Love it. They're your first customer. Love it. Love it. I've got two last questions for you. Relationships. You, myself, you've built relationships over your career. How important are relationships in business today? You know, I think relationships are everything. And the way my wife and I approach our business is that we're in the people business. You know, yeah, we're business owners and we have clients, but we don't forget we're in the people business. Why? Because our clients are people. And the fact that we look at it that way, I think it's allowed us to be really good service providers. I think it allows us to focus on results. Because right now, I'm at the Canadian Franchise Association. I'm a closing keynote speaker. How'd I get here? People hired me, right? Who was that? Meredith Lowry? The yeah. board got together and said, hey, we like Walter Bond. We want him to close it. And I want to come back and make sure that I do a good job for the people that believed in me, the people that invested in me, the people that said yes to me. You know, I feel indebted to say, man, you chose me to be your keynote speaker out of thousands of other speakers. I'm going to give you everything I got. Why? Because you chose me. And I love to compete and I love to win. So anything I get connected to, I'm like, look, put me in the game, coach. I'm going to help us win. Love so it. as I close this conference for the Canadian Franchise Association, my job is to make sure every franchisor is in a winning position to make sure their entire brand wins. Beautiful. Well, speaking of winning... Toronto Raptors. What do you think of the Raptors? Well, you know, Toronto Raptors, you know, um, they're a winning culture. You know, they're, they're, they're a winning organization. And they've been winning for a while, you know, and they've lost some players through the years. And the good news is once you build a culture, you can begin to change players, but the culture is there. Yeah. You know, and so when I think about the Toronto Raptors, they're a franchise. You know, just like any other franchise. It's true. <laughs> Which means they have great leadership which means they've built a winning culture, which means they care about their players, they care about their team, and as a result, their players perform. And to me, Toronto Raptors are a franchise. They should be at this conference too, right? They, they are. They, they built a winning culture. Yeah, so and true. I think the players love playing for them. And when you love playing for a franchise, you're going to give them everything you got. You yeah. know? So I think the, the, the business analogy is the same thing in sports. When you know your own cares about you, your coach cares about you, I've seen Toronto Raptors on TV. They'll have like 50,000 fans outside the stadium <laughs> rocking it, it's right? True. Yeah. <laughs> so the players know, man, these fans and team and town and owners love me, so I'm going to give you everything I got. Why? Because you make me feel so valued. And when you're in the people business, business is easy. But if you're in the money business, all of a sudden you make different decisions. 
So in business, I don't care if it's sports or franchising, you can make a decision to be in the people business or you can make a decision to be in the money business. If you make a decision to be in the money business, you're gonna make decisions based on money. But if you get into the people business, you're gonna do the right thing as it pertains to people. And more times than not, in the long game, you're gonna make a whole lot more money because you're building and cultivating fans, loyalty, and you're building culture. And if you get into the people business, it's the number one, one way to build culture. It's beautiful. Welcome. You want a shake? That's the COVID shake. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were real. Thank, thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks for listening. For more franchising resources, including how-to articles, expert advice, franchisee success stories, and franchise opportunity, visit FranchiseCanada.online. Don't forget to subscribe to Franchise Canada e-news while you're there. You can also learn more about franchising at cfa.ca and can connect with specific franchise opportunities at lookforfranchise.ca.